Hi, I'm Barbara Rimkunis, and this is your Exeter History Minute. The town of Exeter wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the two rivers that run through it. The freshwater Exeter River snakes down from Chester and meets the salty Squamscott River at the waterfalls in the center of town. Natives used the river for fishing. Europeans built sawmills and gristmills after their arrival in the 1600s. The rivers were also the main transportation network. John Wheelwright, our founder, came up the river by boat, and it was most likely a canoe. This isn't an actual photograph of Wheelwright. It's from a reenactment in 1938, but the canoe is probably accurate. Wheelwright's successor, the Reverend Samuel Dudley, had two canoes listed in his probate inventory. Because the Squamscott is a tidal river, it's easy to get trapped on the mud flats at low tide. The Piscataqua Gundalo, a flat-bottomed vessel, was developed with this in mind. If stranded, it would just sit tight for a while and wait for the tide to change. For larger vessels, the most challenging section to navigate was the oxbow. About three miles out of town, the river made a deep loop that resembled an actual oxbow like this one. To get through it, most vessels had to be towed. The town got fed up with the problem, and in 1881, a channel was dug to avoid the whole mess. The oxbow is still there, but the last time I tried to get through it in a kayak, it was so overgrown, I had to back paddle my way out. Commercial river traffic continued into the 20th century, mostly coal barges and the occasional schooner. Today, the river is used primarily for recreation. If you haven't been down there recently, I encourage you to either walk along the shoreline or take a boat ride just to experience the river, and you'll get a better sense of how it drew people here in the first place. For more information on Exeter's history, visit us at the Exeter Historical Society or check out our website at www.exeterhistory.org.